You are imperfect. You are wired for struggle, but you are worthy of love and belonging. Brene Brown. As I go into the 13 things I wish I knew when I was 13 and how this reflection helps me parent and support my 13 year old, this is probably the number one thing that I want my 13 year old to know. We're all imperfect. We are going to face so, so many struggles, but no matter what those struggles are, what those imperfections are, at the end of the day, we are all worthy of living our best lives, of having everything we want, and just being the person that we are meant to be. Welcome to the Empowered Mom Podcast. I'm Nina Piers. I have a bachelor's in psychology, master's in education, and a doctorate in motherhood as a mom of three. Each week, I will be sharing stories and tangible advice and inspiration to empower you. How many times do you catch yourself thinking or even saying, I wish I knew then what I know now? I find myself revisiting that thought all the time. And it's really interesting as a parent, you can kind of look at your kids and you can see them going through their journey and recognize what they're going through and think back to when you were going through that and always come back to that thought like, man, if only I knew then what I know now. And there's that fine line with being a parent and watching your kids go through it, loving them through it, offering them advice through it, but also letting them go through that journey because they kind of have to figure it out on their own. And what do we really know as parents, right? That's kind of how they look at us. So I always think, I think it's kind of ironic that when we're pregnant, there are all sorts of books and so many resources, what to expect, you know, in your first trimester, what to expect when you're expecting, what to expect the first year, what to expect the toddler years. But then after the toddler years, there's not really many books. There's not really a ton of research. There's um, fewer and fewer blogs about the teen years, the tween years, and, you know, everything there after. I think there's like from, I don't know, five until 18, it's kind of like, ah, just figure it out on your own. And we have no advice for you. We have no help for you. It's just kind of going through it blindly. And while we go through it blindly, I think so much of our parenting needs to be intentional. And we can say we're just winging it. We're just figuring it out as we go. But I think the more intentional you are with your conversations and with parenting, the healthier your relationship is going to be with your kids. And while we can't predict their journey and we can't really even manipulate their journey, we can be that support through their journey. So what helps me is thinking back to when I was each of my kids' ages. And while I lived a very, very different life than um, my kids live, still the the events and the the challenges and the journey is really pretty much the same. Middle school is always going to be middle school and relationships are always going to kind of mirror each other as well. So something that I wanted to do today is I wanted to share 13 things I wish I knew when I was 13. So my oldest is 13 And um, I'm actually loving it. And I love this age because it's kind of letting go of some of the innocence and becoming so much more independent, but really trying to figure life out. And it's so complicated. And as a mom, I kind of have to take a step back and I have to watch and let her go through it all and grow through it all. And really all that I can do is love her through it, but I have to be very, very guarded in the direction that I'm pushing her and the advice that I'm giving her. One, because it's not always receptive because it's kind of like, oh, what does mom know? Or, you know, it's the rolling of the eyes like, yeah, 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 I get it. But, and I think 
if we give too much guidance, then we're going to rob them from the growth that really does come from the journey. So um, I just kind of have been thinking and really like thinking about the journey that Ella's going on and all the growth that she's having and the, the challenges and the complications and thinking about what I wish I knew when I was 13. Um, so I wanted to share some of these things with you and then share how we can have conversations with our kids about these things without like forcing it on them and helping it be their own idea. Because if we can love and encourage them and kind of not really trick, but like just support them through making their own idea, which supports the growth even more, that's when the, the magic really happens. So these are not in any particular order. They're just me sharing my heart and um, the 13 things that I thought of that came to my mind. So number one is you don't have to have it all figured out. Now, looking at my 13-year-old, it's almost like, okay, you know, getting ready to go into high school. And nowadays you have to, like, each of our high schools in our district specializes in a different um, area. So it's almost like you need to figure out what you need to be when you grow up um, before you even go into high school. So you can go to the right high school to specialize in the right area to then get you into that right major in college. And it's just like, oh my gosh, they're 13. They're still kids. So, um, for me, like I see Ella saying, this is what I want to be when I grow up and this is what I need to do. And, you know, it, it's overwhelming to take all that on as a 13 year old. And I, need to remind her that she doesn't need to have it all figured out. And how I remind her of that is I support her when she comes up with these ideas like, Oh, that's awesome. Like, yeah, that'll be really good. And if you work hard enough, you can, you can have that. And, um, the biggest thing as a parent though, that I think we need to do is we need to remind our kids that it's okay to change their mind and let them know that they can change their mind as often as they want. So, you know, what they want to be today support it, love on it, be interested. Because if you're like, no, you know, you can't do that or that that's just not a good idea or it's not going to make you enough money or it's too hard of a career to go into there, you can't push them back like that. That's all negative energy that you're passing on them. So you need to love them through it and just be like, oh, that's really cool. Like, that's interesting. Like, oh yeah, I can see you doing that. That's awesome. But also let them know that it's okay to change their mind and share your own journey. Oh, when I was 13, this is what I wanted to be. And then this is what I went to college for. This is what I graduated college um, with. And, you know, this is what I, I started out doing. And then this is what I do now. And it's like, it's so cool to just change your mind as you grow too. So yeah, that's awesome. But know that I love and support you as many times as you change your mind through your journey as well. Um, And I think that's probably the biggest reminder. Don't force them to do anything. Don't hate on what they're doing, but remind them that it's okay to change their mind as many times as they need to or want to. Second thing, this is a hard one um, and it's all about friendships. And we know as adults that our middle school friends are most likely not going to be our lifelong friends. Now, um, sometimes there are, or they are, um, there are some special friendships in that, you know, just stay with you the rest of your life. And that's awesome. But friendships in middle school can be hit or miss. They can be, you know, on and off and lots of emotions and lots of like not so nice things with these friendships. And it makes me question as a parent, like, really, that's your friend and that's what they did to you. But you have to be very careful with this, too, because at this age, these kids are are their friends and in their mind, they're going to be their friends forever. And I remember when I was graduating eighth grade, I had such a hard time at eighth grade graduation because some of us were going to one high school, others were going to another high school, and actually my my bestest, bestest friend in all through middle school was going to the other high school, and I had such a hard time. And I remember my aunt saying, like, oh, don't even worry about it. When you get to high school, 
Um, you're going to get all new friends anyways. And then, you know, you probably won't even ever be in touch with these people again. Like it's not the end of the world. And that crushed me because at that time, it did seem like the end of the world to separate from your best friends and all the, the worry and anxiety about going into high school and that fear and knowing that you don't have your best friend there going through it with you. Like it does seem like the end of the world. So as parents, we, we have to be careful with how we are talking to our kids about that because to them, it is, it, it's so important. But in hindsight, us looking back, like we know that those middle school friends, like they're great in middle school, but chances are, you know, as you continue to grow and, and live your life, they're not going to come with you on your journey. So I wish I knew that when I was 13, but nobody could have told me that. I just needed to be loved and supported through the journey. So that with my 13-year-old right now, I know that and I recognize that. And I share experiences from when I was in middle school, like that situation I just shared with you. So I can kind of model it for her, which is very different than saying oh, these people don't matter. They're not going to be your friends because right now they do matter. And when you're 13, it's really hard for you to see, you know, what life is going to look like in, in 10 years, because you very much live in the present, which is a good thing in which we don't want them to, to lose. So I think the best way to help teach them this lesson is just sharing stories and communicating, but not telling them necessarily. The third thing, and this is one that I wish I could just like plaster billboards up all over to remind every 13 year old, there is no hurry to grow up. Um, it's almost like you, you head into middle school and it's like you go from kid to grown up, just the way you dress, the way you talk, that your appearance, everything. And a philosophy that I've always had in my parenting is letting my kids be kids. And I think society in general forces our kids to grow up way faster than they need to grow up and forces them to be independent. And while I'm all about independent kids, there's a fine line and there's certain responsibilities and certain information that, that kids don't need to have in their life. And we need to protect them being kids as long as they can be kids and not push them to grow up. And then when they do become 13 and all of a sudden it's that 13 going on 30, you know, they think they have life figured out and they can't wait to drive and they can't wait to go to college and they can't wait to, to go live on their own and do their own thing. We need to love them through it and remind them to truly take advantage of this time because all the responsibilities that come like with every year, you know, when they, they're 13, when they become 14, there's even more responsibilities and more stressors that are going to be in their life. So we need to really protect this time and remind them that it's okay to be 13 and it's okay to, to live this innocent life and that they have all the time in the world ahead of them and to just truly be as present as possible because really there's no rush in growing up. But then at the same time, we need to let them become who they are meant to be and not, not persuade them to be a certain way. We need to let them be who they truly are and we need to love them through that because at 13, it's almost like identity crisis. They're really trying to figure out who they are and they're trying to figure out their way. And we need to do that in a way where we love and support them through it without kind of pushing them in one direction where they're going to want to be defiant and go in the opposite direction or rebel or any of that. So we just need to truly love them for who they are. We need to still be their parent and we need to remind them that there's no hurry in growing up because more and more responsibility comes with it and life just gets more and more complicated as you do get older. So the next one I have to throw in because it's something that I truly, truly do wish um, I knew about. And that's going to be just health in general, exercise and nutrition. Um, when I was growing up, I knew nothing about nutrition. Um, dieting was huge. And I saw everybody around me dieting or starving themselves um, in just unhealthy relationships with food in general. 
whether it be binge eating, whether it be emotional eating or whatever. And because that was my environment, that's what I took on as well. Um, And then exercise was not part of our lifestyle at all. And I wish I knew then what I know now about the importance of exercise and nutrition. And it's not about being skinny, but it's about fueling your mind and your body so they're both functioning at their peak state. So exercise is going to give you energy. It's going to give you that mental clarity. It's going to give you that mental strength. And then what we put in our body is a direct impact of how we feel, whether it's energy wise, excuse me, clarity, or just that investment into our future health. So, um, it's important for me as a parent to truly model this to my kids and not force it on them and not talk about like, we don't eat this way to be skinny. We eat this way to be healthy. We don't work out to lose weight. We work out because it makes us feel good and it's fun to do. And I think setting that foundation at a young age and especially at these teenage years where they need an outlet and their body is going through so many different things, um, truly fueling it is going to impact the way they feel and their mood in so many different ways. Um, and the best way to, to really teach that to your kids without, you know, forcing it upon them is to just create that family lifestyle and do it as a family. So they don't know anything else. They don't have another option. Um, number five is going to be trade expectation for appreciation. Now we've been talking about this a lot in our house and something I see is that kids become entitled. And I think it's very natural that at age 13, you kind of take on this entitled personality. You, you know, you want this and you want that and more, 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 give me, give me, give me. And you start kind of seeing what your friends have and you want what your friends have. And it's just this huge expectation that I need this. I want this. Can I have this? Um, And we kind of lose sight of that appreciation And I'm talking about the materialistic things first with all of this. So it's so just as, as a 13 year old, I expected everything from everyone. It's kind of like the world revolves around you. And I lost sight of appreciation completely. Like I didn't see what my friends were doing for me. I didn't see what my family was doing for me. It was just, I wanted more, 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 or expected it to be this way or that way because others had it that way. So something that I do with my kids is focus on gratitude. We start our day with gratitude. We always make sure we are expressing gratitude towards each other. And that just puts you in that appreciative mindset. I'm not saying it's going to cancel out the expectation aspect of it, but it's going to at least give you some appreciation instead of having all of these expectations all the time. But then the other part of this is the expectations you have of others. So I think at this age, again, you have this mindset that the world revolves around you. So you expect others to treat you this way or expect others to give you this or do that. And it doesn't really work like that. Um, we need to truly appreciate anything and everything that others are doing for us and giving us in every way. And that to me is, or this aspect here is something that I feel like adults still struggle with. And while it's a incredibly difficult thing for 13 year olds to understand, it's, you have to go into it without expecting them to completely get it but know that you're modeling this appreciation and gratitude. So as they get older, they can understand it better. Um, And to me, that's just something that I think everybody needs to really work on. We have so many expectations, but if we can trade those expectations in for appreciation, it's huge. And I do think starting as young as you can and in the teen years is huge. Number six is kindness over everything. Um, I think at age 13, 
it's easy to be cool and kind isn't necessarily cool and it's so easy to give in to peer pressure and sometimes when you give in to peer pressure you are doing things that you know you shouldn't be doing or treating others the way that you shouldn't be treating them and I think a lot of times as parents we're the punching bags so whatever our kids are going through at school or with their peers or in sports we kind of you know, are that outlet and we take on everything They because they feel comfortable, like just lashing out on us. And we need to recognize that as parents, that it's not a personal thing, but actually be grateful that they're able to take it all out on us because they do need an outlet and it's healthier for them to do it to us than it is to do it at school or to friends or in other ways. And the only way you can really model or teach them that kindness trumps everything and to just be kind and have that kind heart and to always lead with your heart is to one, model it and two, talk about it. And, you know, as they're telling you stories, just ask what they can do or do give them a challenge to do random acts of kindness. And maybe you take on a challenge of your family with your family and say, okay, today I want you each to do a random act of kindness, or let's see who can do the most amount of random acts of kindness today. And just really make sure you're leading and talking about it um, as a parent that way. So then the kids will naturally do that. And I, I truly think that at the end of the day, if, if your 13 year old can lead with kindness, and recognize that being kind and leading with that loving heart is more important than anything else in the world, then they're going to do amazing things and truly change the world. So number seven, um, when people are mean, it's usually not about you. It's about them. Now, I have dealt with this quite a bit with my kids. And I'm grateful that we have a relationship where they feel comfortable talking to me. But so often this, I mean, I'm glad this follows up the kindness one because so often kids are not kind to each other and they're going to say hurtful things or they're going to do hurtful things to you. And while it tears you up inside, it usually never is about you. So when my kids come home in tears or they come home just down and, you know, not themselves at all, and they share the incident or experience that they had where others were not kind to them, we have to remind them that it's usually not about them. It's usually someone else's insecurity or jealousy that's fueling them to be mean and Sometimes when I'm I'm sharing this and explaining it to my kids, it almost sounds like it's egotistical, like, oh, it's not it's not about you, it's about them. But it usually is true. If somebody is going to make fun of your appearance, it's because they're insecure with their appearance. If somebody's gonna make fun of, you know, how well you're doing at something and tease you about something, it's usually because they're jealous that they're not doing as well as you are. Um and that's really hard for kids to understand, but, and it's easier for us to see. So it's really just having that conversation and saying like, well, when, like using them, when were you mean to somebody and why were you mean to them? Were you mean to them because you were jealous? Were you mean to them because they were mean to you first? And just talking through those situations so they can better understand it. So the next one is be unapologetically you. So peer pressure is huge. We need to conform. We need to be just like everybody else. And I think this age is that prime age where you're really trying to fit in and you're willing to be anybody and everybody that you aren't. But if you can truly be unapologetically you, you're going to be so much happier, so much healthier and as you get older, you're not going to continue to try to fit in that mold, but you're going to understand that you are you and you are different than everybody else. And that in itself is a gift and absolutely amazing. So something I like to tell my kids is that it doesn't matter what other people are doing. 
what truly matters is who you are becoming and how much you are growing. So, so often it's easy for us to look all around at other people and it's really hard for us to look in the mirror. And sometimes that's for taking responsibility for things. It's so easy to blame other people, but it's hard to take the responsibility for your own actions or for that, the outcome that you're living or the experiences that you're having. We're just so busy looking around ourselves and not looking inside of ourselves. And also, you know, we're so worried about fitting in and being like others that even if we're uncomfortable and kind of feel like we have a costume on or we're wearing a mask, we would rather feel that way than be ourselves and stand out. But I think if we can encourage our kids to truly be themselves and all of their their flaws and quirks and in all of the things that make them different, if we can truly celebrate them and love them, then they become more confident in doing that. And I think as adults, I see so many people struggle with confidence. And I think it starts at this age where we try to fit into that mold. And we're not going to be confident if we're trying to be somebody that we're not. But we are going to be confident if we can truly love and honor who we are on the inside and out. And that's our, our imperfections, our quirks, and all of the, the things about us, not just the highlights, but all of the, the little tiny things about us too. If we can recognize them, honor them, and love them, then that's when we become confident. But if we're not being ourselves and trying to be like everybody else, that's when we lack confidence, and that sticks with us for the rest of our lives. So number nine kind of goes hand in hand with be unapologetically you, and that's going to be to love yourself. And I wish that when I was 13, I knew how important it was um, to truly love myself and that loving myself would be the biggest gift that I could give myself and give other people. And With my kids today, something I teach them all the time is to truly love and respect themselves in every way possible and to love themselves more than they love anyone else and that when they truly do love themselves, they're able to show up in this world in a better way and make a bigger impact. And that's hard because, again, you have the peer pressure. You have, you know, your friends competing with you. You have so many people you're comparing yourself to. But the best way I can teach my kids to truly love themselves is for me to love them as much as I can and continue to work on loving myself and modeling that so I don't pass down any of the insecurities or show them any of the behaviors that are not loving myself. So that is huge and it's probably as a parent, the one thing I want my kids to truly learn and implement in life more so than anything else. So we put a lot of emphasis on this and just loving ourselves as much as possible. Um, Number 10 is nobody cares what you are wearing. Um, I know at 13, you know, you can think everybody's looking at you and everybody is going to be judging you and you know, how do I look in this? I need this outfit. I need to be shopping at this store. And at the end of the day, nobody even knows what you're wearing or cares what you're wearing because everybody else is worrying about the same thing. So they're so (laughs) worried about themselves that they're not even recognizing what you're wearing. So just be comfortable. Be you, be comfortable. You don't need this outfit because this is the store and the brand that's in style. You don't need to wear this because everybody else is wearing this. Like truly do you and be comfortable because everybody else is worried about themselves. So they're not even caring what you're wearing. Um, this one is huge. And I, I think we need this as adults too. And I so wish that I would have done this when I was 13 because I think it would have changed my energy, it would have changed my mood, and it would have helped me to, to just be more confident. And that's to delete the people that steal joy in your life. So we're surrounded by negative people all the time. And sometimes some of our best friends 
are the most negative people or sometimes our our circle of our closest friends are the people that we give the the ability to steal all of our joy and happiness from ourselves and i wish that i knew it would be okay to to not associate with those people when i was younger and seeing my 13 year old go through this is tricky because we want them to get along with everybody and we want them to, you know, lead by example and we want them to, to fit in and all of that. But at the end of the day, it's not worth allowing others to steal your joy and to, to take away your happiness. So if, if there's people that are like that in their circle of friends or that they're associating themselves with all the time or if there's that one person on the team, you have to know that when you lead with confidence and when you're so happy with yourself and when you love yourself, nobody else can steal your joy. And if they're constantly there trying to steal your joy, then it's okay to not have them in your life. And you don't have to get along with everyone. You don't have to always be the bigger and better person. And you don't have to be the one that's responsible for teaching them and changing who they are. It's okay to just delete them from your life. And this is hard because I think we have so many gifts inside of us that we can have that power to change people and have that power to show people that there's another way. But at the end of the day, there's always going to be some people that just get the best of you and just make you feel small. And it's their life mission to to make you feel that way. So it's okay to get rid of them and you don't have to associate with them or be the bigger and better person always. You can just walk away from that. Um, The next one, number 12. Um, Something I was always told, and I wasn't told this until I was in high school, but it's something that I still wholeheartedly believe today, and that is you can have whatever you want as long as you truly want it and work hard enough to get it. So, so often around this age, our kids, you know, have their big dreams. And as parents, we are realistic and we try to knock down their dreams or we try to give them a more realistic option or push them in one direction or another. And what we're doing is we're teaching them that they're, to stop dreaming. We're teaching them to be more re- realistic. We're teaching them to fit a mold and do what's expected and to go the easier route. And I think if, if we can teach our kids that, sure, dream those dreams, but be willing to work as hard as you possibly can to get those dreams. Because at the end of the day, It's not about that destination. It's about that journey and everything you learn on that journey and how you grow through it. So that's something that I actually did know um, when I was a few years older than 13, but that's something that I still live by today and tell my kids on a daily basis. And then the last one, number 13, is failure's part of the journey. So we see our kids struggle so much with the idea of failure. So many times at 13, you know, our kids haven't really failed big and we put so much emphasis on not failing. However, failing is part of the journey and so many lessons and so much growth comes out of failing. So I think teaching our kids to fail fast and when our kids do fail, I think showing them all of the the positives that came out of that failure and all the growth that came out of it is truly amazing. So we celebrate failures in our house and we strive to fail as fast as we can. And not only do we celebrate those failures, but we highlight all of the growth and all of the amazing things that do come out of that failure. And because of that mindset, um, our kids are more likely to take risks and they're more likely to do bigger, like to go really big with the things that they do instead of playing safe and staying comfortable. 
they get uncomfortable on a daily basis and they go so big and take every risk possible because they know that it's okay to fail and we we celebrate all those failures and we highlight all the growth. So those are my 13 things that I wish I knew when I was 13 and some of the the conversations and lessons that um, we have in our house and that we've learned along the way and continue to grow and learn through. So I hope you found value in all of those. And um, maybe this brings you back to think about what you wish you knew you what you wish you knew when you were 13 and um, take that time to reflect so it can help you as a parent. And one of my goals and part of my mission is to have these conversations um, about parenting through the tween years and parenting through the teen years, because I feel more alone than ever being a parent of an 11-year-old and a 13-year-old um, than I did as a new parent not having any, not knowing anything um, because there was so much support around that and there were so many resources. But now with our, our teenagers, there's not as much support. There's not as much conversation. And I think the more conversation we have about parenting through the teens and the more comfortable we are talking about it, then the better we can be at being those role models for our kids and continuing to parent them. Because I think some, the parenting now is, is so valuable and so important. Whereas when they were, ki- when they were kids, <laughs> when they were babies, it was really just about providing them their needs, changing their diapers, keeping them clean, feeding them, keeping them safe. Whereas now parenting isn't just, they can take care of themselves. They can feed themselves. They can do all of that. But parenting is more for those mental needs now and um, just for the mental health of it. So the more we talk about this, the the better we can lead our kids and, and parent them through this to be as healthy and as happy as they can be now and while they're adults. So hope you found lots of value in all of this. As always, feel free to reach out to me if you would love like to continue this conversation. I would love to support you in any way that I can.